and welcome to the third and final installment of Living as a Poet, brought to you by the French Institute of South Africa, um, Total South Africa, in collaboration with Impepo Press, and hosted by the ever so gracious, always awesome um, Poetry Africa that is housed by the UKZN Center for Creative Arts. Um, today, I'm really excited. So the whole series began um, with the launch um, of the, the poets who have been chosen to be a part of yesterday's and imagining realities, an anthology of, poet, of South African poetry. Um, and that, that process was kind of spoken about and launched on Monday, and then on Tuesday, we began um, talking to different pe different poets about living as a poet. So we spoke to Sis Malika Ndlovo um, about balancing between writing um, authentically and paying the bills. And then we talked about money um, and and kind of um, financial well being with Vangile Makwakwa. And today we're with Sarah Godsell. Um, and we're talking about publishing, um, what it takes, um, how you should go about doing it, what is publishing, um, and you are more than welcome to please send us your questions. If you're watching via Twitter, via Facebook, via YouTube, however you're watching, just put it in the chat. Someone will pick it up and send the, uh, the questions through to us. If you're here in the in the webinar room itself, um, just drop a message in the chat when you have a question. And towards the end, um, we'll also have a brief Q and A, um, a more formal Q and A. So um, today, Sarah Godsell is um, she's a poet, she's a historian, she's a healer. Um, and an incredible activist and mom. And she is a publisher. She's one third of Mbepo Press. Um, and so we're going to have this conversation. Hi, Sarah, how are you? You're muted. <laughs> Hi, Gogo. It's wonderful to be here with you. Gogo. Um, so let's start with, with just kind of a, a, a brief background on um, what kinds of publishing they are, like as in um, what is publishing, like as in just on a very kind of basic level. So you have your manuscript, your baby that you've put hours and hours of labor into, <laughs> that you've put hours of hours, hours and hours of editing into, that you've put hours and hours of friends and colleagues and um, other eyes of editing into. So where do you go from there? There are three kinds of publishing that you can go with in South Africa. There's, you can do self-publishing independently where you don't work with anyone, you do everything yourself or you um, uh, kind of outsource independently to people who do layout and cover design with you. Or there's self-publishing with a self-publishing company where you work with a company that does self-publishing, you pay for the services and they help you produce the book. They can provide proofreading, they can provide editing, they can provide layout, they can provide cover design, the ISBN number, you enter into a contract with them, but you pay for the service. And then there's publishing with a full publishing company where they take on the risk, they take on your, your manuscript and you'll do the editing together, they'll do the proofreading, the layout, the, the cover design, obviously in, in dialogue with you, um, but you don't cover any of the costs, you will get royalties from the book rather than, so it's those three kind of main types of publishing, if I've covered that right. Yeah. Um, you have, you have um, two collections of your own. So one is published um, as, as a self, I mean, you've, you've self-published it through poetry publications, which is a self-publishing consultant um, company. And then the other is published through Impepo Press. So um, just like, I mean, if, if someone is at home and they're thinking, what are the kind of the pros and cons of, of either process? 
what would you say kind of were the the high and low lights the highlights and the low what what would it be like the the low points of um of each process i think um both processes have been really exciting and really fruitful working with poetry publications there's not the same um, risk of sending your manuscript to a publisher and getting the rejection letter saying uh, thank you our your work isn't for us um, so there's not that process of of kind of being taken into a bigger organ organism um, but you do have fuller control over the work you have fuller control over what uh, so if I, the, the editing processes were very different. Um, poetry publications run by the wonderful Flo Wellington um, provided wonderful editing, but I had the ultimate say over what was going to happen or not. And I could say if the edit, if I didn't like the edits, I could say no, because ultimately it's my book. With Impepo Press, um, the editing process was harsher, it was sore, but ultimately I think it made it a better book. So there's an expertise level that goes into both processes. Um, I think one of the nice things about self-publishing is that you control your own print runs. So when you're out of stock, you, you print the book, um, the low point of that is that you have to pay for the print runs. The high point of being with a with a publishing company is that when the book is out of stock, the publishing company reprints. You get your reprints, but you don't have you don't have full control over. Um, you get your copies of the book, but you don't have full control over uh, selling the book. Um, so it's it's various kind of. It, it's weighing up processes. I think for me, the biggest plus for publishing with a company is that you're part, you're tied to a bigger organism. You're part of a collective, you're part of a culture, you're, you're connected to other authors, you're connected to, um, to a, a company that already has processes of promotion, of events, of uh of how to get your book out there and that can happen with public with self-publishing companies but your book is more your responsibility it's more your responsibility to get the book out there and Goga Vukile you had that 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 um, experience also you self-published without going through a company you did everything on your own pioneering as you do what was that experience like I mean, I think when I when I self published um, and dressing in front of the window, I I did it kind of as well, obviously because I felt like um, I felt like I really needed to release this book. I had the, these poems, and I felt like I I really needed them to exist and to to kind of be immortalized. And like I think I really want us to talk about that, about the intention behind publishing. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I actually interned at various publishing houses so that I could get an idea of what the process is. Um, and I, I mean, well, because, because I'm one third of Impepo Press, the, 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 the actual process itself hasn't been much different, um, but the, the risk has been different. So we, as you were saying, um, with when I when I published addressing in front of the window, I paid for everything myself. And um, with Impepo Press, even though I was part of the the paying for everything, it was not as 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 Zuvangile or as Uagugile. It was as Impepo Press. And so we had to think about it in terms of um, a bigger picture. We had to think about it in relation to other books in relation to the, the, the publishing schedule that we had set up. And so all the decisions weren't made just about that single book. They were made about that, that publishing schedule that we had set up. Um, but one of, the, one of the things that I do wanna say is that I think what, what helped me, and I mean, I, I, I look at I'm dressing in front of the window now and I obviously kind of, oh, you know, but I have to be kind because that was my first baby. Um, and it was true to who I was then. It's not who I am now, um, but I, I appreciate the voice behind undressing in front of the window. Um, and I try to be deeply compassionate towards Vangi Ganjo. 
um, and wh what she wanted to do. And I think that's like, I, I, I want us to come back to that um, and link it to that intention. But one of the things that I did was I went and I actually got different people to look at my manuscript. So I got, um, I got opinions from like, um, you know, a literature professor. I got um, Philippa Ya de Villiers, um, edited the 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 final the final book. Um, I had I put together a team. I had Tanya Pretorius do the layout, and so I understood that I have a manuscript, but I don't have the expertise to put together a book, and so I need a team to work with me so that the book can come together. And I think that's what's really important is that you yeah. can't do it by yourself and you shouldn't. We're not designed to operate alone as human beings. So build a community and use the collective expertise so that you, yeah. can, you can get it out. But like as in, I wanna talk a bit about this, about intention. So you have a, you have a collection of poems um, and you have to decide, is it a chapbook? Is it, is it um, a, a full manuscript? But before that, you have to ask yourself, um, well, sorry, you know, we're living in real life in COVID times. And so <laughs> alarms go off and children are running around. But you have to think about um, what, what kind of manuscript you have, what kind of manuscript you're producing. But before that, there's also different types of publishing. So for example, when we did the call for, um, for the, 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 the yesterdays and imagining, his, imagining realities, there were some people who, the, under the rules it stated that your poems can't have been previously published. And some people, um, and it says even on social media. And so you have to think about that. Social media is also a form of publishing because to publish is to release into the world. And so there are many ways in which you publish. Mm. Um, I think that that's, yeah. I think that that's so important also because the intention behind it, some of the poems that, that I have and, and that I release on, Facebook, my intention is just to share a fledgling piece of a fledgling poem that's maybe going to someday be in a manuscript, but it's not um, sharing a kind of finished work or finished piece. And, it, and, and you do have to have an awareness once things released on social media, you might, you are excluding it from a lot of different publishing possibilities. So you mm. might get an immediate audience, but you're, um, you're, you're ex excluding yourself from wider publishing possibilities. I think just going back to the team that you created, thinking about um, the diff different kinds of publishing as well, you don't know what you don't know. <laughs> and so like the, the team is really important and that's where either you need to know the right people, you need to have the, the collective or find the collective that works for you or the, the self-publishing company is really helpful because they know the business. They know about the gutter margins so that you don't cut off your own poems' words. And they know about widows and orphans, which I definitely didn't know about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and it's also a huge learning process so that you kind of bond with your manuscript. So I think what, what Goga Vukile is saying about the intention of the manuscript is so important because what you want it to be and do in the world you walk a process with your manuscript um, and you kind of make different bonding processes and there will be parts where you hate it. So you really need to be sure that this is what you want to do, what you want to release because, because it's a journey that you walk and choosing the team, choosing the, the, the process, choosing the path is important. And I see um, we have a question or um, a question from Jennifer and she's asking, um, she says she's a, a very paranoid about self-publishing. How do you know who is legit? Um, so I'm not, I'm not sure whether she means how do you know who is legit as a self-publishing um, consultant or, um, or if she, like, I, I think maybe we'll wait for, for some clarification on, on that. But um, I, do, I do want us to, to talk about like this, the reason why a lot of like as in when you when you publish it 
um, when you publish it on social media, and the reason why you then get excluded from different from different opportunities is because um, what 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 those competitions are looking for is something fresh, something new, something that hasn't been out before. And so that's why they want things that have not been published. Um, and so there's nothing wrong with sharing your poems, um, as you were saying, sharing your poems on social media. Um, but thinking about, thinking about, and also being gentle with yourself, knowing that you might share something that isn't finished and that will be finished later. And it's okay to share works in progress, but it goes back to the intention behind your publishing. Um, so Jennifer has asked who is legit in terms of um, the self-publishing house or, or publisher. So I think, I think that that's basic research. You have, to, you have to do some research. If you see a company um, that says that they self-publish, you need to ask yourself, um, you need to do some research and find out what other titles do they have under their belt. Um, and go and have a look at those titles. Are those titles any good? Um, is this the kind of family, like as in literary family that you want to enter into? And um, that, will, that will determine whether or not they're, they're worth publishing with. Um, mm -hmm. But I wanna, I wanna ask you some questions around editing. I think, I think we, need, we need to also talk about editing. What, yeah. Like, what's your kind of experience with editing or just kind of your, how you value editing? Are you asking me or the audience? I'm, I'm asking you. <laughs> I value editing and I hate editing. Um, I find it very difficult. I, I, I think that it's really important that you have several channels of editing that your, you editing yourself, that's always going to be your primary channel because even when you're working with other people, you've got to come back to yourself. You know the intention of the poem, you know, but it's also because the poem is so personal to you, it's very easy to get lost in the poem being personal and not seeing the whole poem. Mm -hmm. So there's the, the phrase, kill your darlings, you know, you've got to sometimes get rid of that beautiful line that you love. You've got to sometimes cut a poem that's four pages down to one stanza. Um, and that's hard, that's painful, and you can't do it on your own. So I think it also comes back to what you were saying about having a team and mm -hmm. having a team that you can get really constructive criticism for. I remember for my, for Seaweed Sky that I published with Poetry Publications, I um, was lucky enough to get my Kosazana Kaba to edit for me. And I cried, I cried when I first got mm. her edit because it's painful because these are your babies and we become very attached to them as like, I'm a poet and these are my poems and they're wonderful. Um, mm. And then you get questions of, of like, is this a poem? Is this really a poem? Is this really what you want to put out there under your name? And you need the other eyes. So I think that having a circle of friends who will give you critical feedback, who are not just going to say, yes, this is amazing, mm. who will look at the form of a poem, who will look at the, the story of a poem, because poems are stories at the end of the day, mm. you know, and is it telling, sure. is, the, is the poem true to the story? Um, so having a group of critical friends that you share and that you write with, and then having somebody edit the manuscript as a whole, because also a manuscript, the narrative of the, of the manuscript is really important. It's not just a collection of poems. It tells a story in itself. So the order, the ordering of the poems is really important as an important part of the editing. Um, yeah. So I, I, I love and I hate editing. I love that moment when the poem finally comes alive properly. And you're like, yes, this, this is what I wanted it to do. This is what, what I could see but you you need and often and you need to put money into this you need to invest in this if, if you're self-publishing because um, professional editors cost money but it's absolutely worth it because this is your manuscript that you're putting out so you you're going to need to pay a professional editor to look at your work to work with you to create the manuscript that you need but what is your experience with editing Gogabukile what's what are the hardest things for you? 
I mean, listen, I, I think um, feedback groups kind of completely destroyed um, my kind of personal attachment to, to my sentiments towards a poem. Um, I obviously I still feel feel them, but I pledge allegiance to the poem always, and so it's about listening. Um, and also, it's so important to find an editor who loves your poetry first of all, um, who is critical, um, and who speaks the same poetic language as you. So um, not everybody is going to be just because they're a good editor is going to be able to edit your particular poems. Um, and so I, I enjoy editing. I think because I enjoy, I enjoy the editing, like being an editor. Um, I enjoy, I enjoy listening to poetry, whether it's on paper or in, um, or like audi audibly, like, I mean, like listening to it. Um, I really genuinely enjoy good poetry. Um, but I also think that it's a, it's a difficult process. Someone is asking, so we have some questions. We have quite a number of questions. Um, Tando Lued, who is asking, um, can you please unpack the process of having Impepo Press publish one's poems? Um, we're gonna come back to that just now. And then um, Claire Mary Taylor asks, what are your thoughts on online publishing, for example, Kindle um, or Amazon? Um, and so maybe you want to take the Kindle and Amazon um, question. I mean, I think it's really important to have ebook versions of um, hardcover books. I don't, I'm not going to claim to be, uh, to have expertise in publishing only on Amazon or only on Kindle. But I do think that with the the world changing the way it is it's online books are a very important aspect of publishing yeah. that should go together with the book and i think when we're talking about that we can also talk about audio audio books um nikki giovanni was saying yesterday that she's just converted her books into audio books and that um that's really made a different kind of connection for her between her and the audience because people get to hear you. So I think exploring different different mediums is really important. And Kolaka yeah. Putuma has just released um, the, the, the experience, the audio experience, the audio visual experience of um, Collective Amnesia. Um, and you go to her website and you, you pay an amount of money and you get access to the audio visual experience. And I think, I mean, I think that's a brilliant idea. Um, mm -hmm. There are many, there are many different ways indeed. Um, around, okay, so the different types of, of Poetry editors, Katleho um, Shora is asking, what are the different types of poetry editors? I think I, more than different kinds of poetry editors, I think it's finding, like, so basically I would look at the poem, the poems I'm attracted to, and then I would see who edited those poems. Um, because then you get a sense of what kind of of what kind of editing that person can do. And, um, or if you know someone is an editor, ask them for some poems that they have edited. Then you get a sense of what, of what, the, what kind of work they have behind them. Um, but it, it, it really takes research and digging and finding and, um, and also understanding that you don't have to take the editor's suggestions. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, this is your poem. So say no, thank you. That's not what I'm going for. That's not what I'm trying. And then let the, like as in, and, and be okay with that. Um, and I think, I think the reason why editing, for me, the reason why editing is so important is because there are people who, who are naturally born with it, like as in, who just speak poems, like Musi, Musi oozes poetry, like as in, she has that thing. She has that, you know, she has it. Um, and so with her, the crafting around it becomes how do we not give everything away um, in one poem? How do we rein it in so that we stay true to the poem? So that, um, it, because like too much sugar is not good for you. Like no matter how much you love candy floss, you can't have too much of it. Um, so how do you get enough, just the right, the right amount of it? And so um, I think everybody needs to find 
um, uh, uh, an editor who speaks their poetry language. Now let's just mm -hmm. talk about Impepo Press. Um, I mean, you and I both know what kind of, but like as in what, what, what makes you come alive for Impepo Press and like as in what makes you say, yes, this is the kind of manuscript um, you want us to consider? I mean, I think we're looking for a new, we, we, it, it's difficult to put into words, which is uh, a failing for a poet, but mm -hmm. brave voices, voices that are intensely themselves, um, something feminist in the in the book and that doesn't mean that the poems have to be declaratively feminist or only about women or but there is a there is a, a a kind of moral ethical core um people who are experimental with form and style but who pay attention to the who pay attention to the details um what really I mean, what makes a manuscript come alive also is to see that somebody's really spent time with it, that this is not a kind of first draft that somebody has put together and sent in. Um, because then that just shows us, because when we take on a manuscript, it's a commitment to the author and the book, and we need the author to make a commitment to us and the book. And so we need, we need that commitment. Um, the types of voices, I think we've, we're very open, but it, it needs to be something new. What are, you, what are your conditions, Abukile? Yeah, I think um, I'm pretty much the same. I, 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 I think I want to be haunted by a manuscript. So um, I, want, I, I, I don't want it to leave me. I want it to follow me everywhere where I'm thinking to myself, oh my gosh. And then there was that poem. Hey, and then there was that, you know, like as in where even if it doesn't come perfect, mm. you know, there is no such thing as a perfect manuscript, but yeah. it must be haunting. There must be um, something, something about it that just doesn't leave you because that's the kind of book people are going to buy. That's the kind of book that's going to touch um, people's lives. I mean, not everybody's lives, but somebody's life. Um, and that's the kind of that's the kind of literature I want. I want to be part of the Impepo Press legacy, um, mm -hmm. and so we, yeah, we don't we don't take unsolicited manuscripts. We do um, intend to have a call for for manuscripts, but we're not going to be able to have one this year um, because we don't have the capacity to go through all the manuscripts that, um, because I mean, doing a call, you, like is it, and I think, um, I know that it's it's disappointing for some people, but doing a call for, for a manuscript and you get like over a hundred manuscripts and you have to read every single manuscript. You have to read every single poem in every single manuscript so that you can get a sense of whether or not there is something there. And so um, we we just because the three of us and we we don't have the capacity this year we'd rather not and the last time we we had a call but and there were many beautiful poems that just weren't the poems that 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 spoke to what we were trying to do mm -hmm. and um, so but but people need to submit to literary journals people need to submit to um, different types of literary publications submit your short story, submit your poems, because we read those. And so it'll be like, hey, did you read this? Have you seen? And then it's like, okay, we need to check out these people. So this is, this is how you get yourself out there. Um, it doesn't, it's not as simple as, oh, I have poems and I deserve to be published. Everybody deserves to be published. Everybody's story deserves to be heard, but um, not everybody's story will be heard. Not everybody's story will be sold. Um, and not everybody is going to make it onto the bookshelves. And so what will set you apart? What makes your story, uh, like what pushes your story ahead, I think? Yeah. And I think um, that there's... No, no, I, no, carry on. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think that there's a central honesty. I mean, one of the things that we want to do at, as in Pepper Press, we all 
said that we had our lives saved by books. And so we want to publish books that save lives. <laughs> and that's a very difficult um, quality to pin down. I had just wanted to come back to the, the hidden costs of publishing a first time author might forget to consider. Um, Goga Bukila, do you have anything on that? Sorry, please just repeat that. The hidden costs of a pub of a publishing ah, self publishing. Yeah. yeah, a first time author might forget to consider. Yeah. So you're going to need to pay a, um, an editor, you're going to need to get someone to do your layout, you're going to need to obviously get the printing costs, you need to pay a proofreader. Um, you also need to think about um, what kind of marketing plan you have for your book, if that's what, if that's something you want to do. Um, and then think about how you want to launch your book. So um, a hidden cost would be um, you have your books, but now you want to get them at festivals. You have to pay for your own transport to get yourself to those festivals to, um, to, so that they can come out. Um, you, yes, um, you also need to think about distribution. If, you, if you're going to distribute um, like through a big, I'm not gonna name the bookstore, but like as in through a major bookstore, you need to know that they're going to take um, like a 40%, you know, you, like, so these are, these are things that you don't understand initially. And you think that you're just going to, to take the money and put it in your pocket. And it's not that simple because if your book is hundred, if you sell your book at 180 Rand, you need to figure out how much it costs to make. Um, so your book can, you know, the printing of, of one book is not just the, is not the only cost. The cost is the editing, the layout, the what, what, and you add that up and then you, you divide it into the number of books you've printed, and then you'll be able to see how much the book costs. Does that make sense? Yeah. And it's important so we've to run out of time. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, no, it's fine. Carry on. Important. It's important to factor in. The hours of your own time as well when you're when you're putting when you're working out how much one book costs. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so we've come to the end um, of this um, conversation, and I know that some people still have more questions. If you have more questions, please just type them into the um, like whatever avenue you're watching from. Um, type them in, and um, we'll we'll kind of go through and see if we can answer. But um, I hope that you've enjoyed the, the whole series, the whole, um, the three part series. I hope that um, you're enjoying the festival because it's a fantastic festival. Um, we have some amazing poets and um, some amazing poetry um, collective conversations. Um, and yeah, so good luck with your with your work, good luck with your poetry, good luck with your life as a poet. Um, and we wish you love, we wish you light, we wish you courage. Magukani, Samak.